Thursday, Friday, we will do 4-8. We are not doing 4-7. And then on Monday and Tuesday, we'll review Wednesday, Thursday. I know Thursday. I know. If we, we can do Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and review on just one day. I'll let you think about it. Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, that was my partner. It's my bad. I have to look at it. Okay. So I'm going to draw a Norman window, but I'm going to use my little tools here. Which one? Oh, on the quiz? I can't talk about it without people in the audience. Oh, I should do that. I should send my person out. Very few. Okay, so you have to go. I'll pause my recording. No. I brought it. This is it. <laughs> okay. I don't want two. Oh, I do want two Y. Why do I want two Y? Because I have a two Y here. I can replace the two Y with that two Y. Does that make sense? Otherwise, I could divide by two and then multiply back by two. Same thing. So that my area, I haven't done any calculus, is R times 2Y, which is 30 minus 2R minus pi R. Remember, pi is just a number. Plus 1 half of pi R squared. You can close the interval. It's not fun. I don't know if the derivative is any easier, you know, looking at the first derivative test. Maybe second derivative test is easy. I don't know. Like I said, on the exam, if they ask, would do the sum as the maximum, it's going to be a maximum. That's the minimum. It will be a minimum. They're not going to trick you. So before I take the derivative, I'm going to distribute this. So it's 30R minus 2R squared, right, minus pi R squared plus one-half pi r squared. I can combine similar terms, or I can just take the derivative. I think I just can take the derivative. Are you okay with that? And there's a lot of stuff I can combine, but it's ugly. So it's dadr. And I'm going to look where that's at. zero or undefined. Those are my candidates. Oh, yeah, I'll slide it. So I took 2y, I did this, and put it in here for the 2y here. And then I distributed r. So r times 30, r times negative 2r, r, I think I did it right, and r times minus pi r. And then now I'm going to take the derivative. Because that's the only letter I have there. Had I switched over to h's, then I would have done h. <laughs> It's not a related rate. It's not a, a D, D, T or anything. Okay. So, Zach, what do I get here? You can't take the derivative of 30R? You can. 30 minus 4R minus 2 pi R plus pi R. That's the ADR. Do you want to go ahead and take the second derivative? I don't know if it's going to help me. The first derivative test looks like it's going to be tough, but can you just solve for R first? Where will my maximum occur when the ADR is zero? Now, you may be asking, how am I going to add all that up? Why don't we factor out an R? I might have wanted to do a negative one up there, but this is negative 4. So now it would be clear what you can add. Minus 2 pi plus pi. That's the algebra. That was always geometry. Now it's algebra. The calculus is doing the derivative. That was easy. 
but Mac, just Alliance and Max is not so easy. I'll try it again in this case. And what do I get when I try to simplify that? What's this going to give you? It's, this is going to give you minus 4 minus pi. I did this by minus 4 minus pi. Put a factor of a negative. It doesn't really matter. So adding this term to both sides will make that now positive. So it's r times 4 plus pi. Remember, pi is just 3.14 equals 30. Solving for r, could you use fra uh, decimals? If you do, keep them all there. So pi is about 3, so it's about 37. Anybody want to give me a decimal answer because that makes more sense? I don't want to move my calculator because my board's not working very well. No, oh, I'll do my math. 30 divided by parentheses, 4 plus pi. 4.2007. Now, how many decimal places should I have? You know, if you don't know, you're not certain, copy them all down. You have to have at least so if you copy it all down and you mess up on the last digits, you just copy it wrong. No big deal. All we look at are the first three. So this is all we're going to look at. So you could have 4.200 or 4.201. Those would be section one and two. But it's just trivial when you make it 4.2. Well, that'd be okay in this case because it's the same. But still, we have to be careful. How do I know it's the maximum? Let's do this second derivative. We have it now. Now this would be a calculator problem. It's all your one-way calculators. I don't know. I thought it was easy. Okay, so let's do the second derivative. So I'm going to take the derivative here. So d squared a dr squared. The 30 goes away, and I get minus 4 minus 2 pi plus pi. Oh. So this is minus 4 minus pi, which is less than 0. Therefore, using the second derivative test, it doesn't even matter what r is. It's concave down, so it's a max. The first derivative test is puzzle. You have to justify why it's a max. But you know, it's probably worth one point. It just gets tough. I, the second derivative test is just easier. I have always to do the second derivative test. I always have to know the first derivative or the critical term, one or the other. So when you do Taylor series, you know those derivatives. You know the first derivative on a Taylor series. Okay, what was the other one? 25. I saw some papers with 25 kind of knocked out. And it actually is a little bit easier uh, numerically. Okay, we done with this one? John, you know how to do this? Yes, 225. I have a piece of wire. There's my wire. And it's 10 meters long. And I'm going to cut it into two pieces. So if this side is X, then what's this side? And to add up to 10, 10 minus x. You could call it y if you want. I don't care. I did it right away. One piece is bent into a square, and the other is bent into an equilateral triangle. So one of them is going to be a square, and the other one's going to be an equilateral triangle. And it doesn't matter which piece is which. So what do I want to find? How should the wire be cut so that the total area enclosed is a maximum or a and a minimum? It's supposed to both. So it doesn't matter. What do you want to call this whole length, x or 10 minus x? OK, so then this side is 10 minus x over what? 4. Is that OK? Pretty good? Is that OK? And then this is x, 
but I divided it into three for parts, so this is x over what? Three. Now, do you know the formula for an equilateral triangle? Well, you might need to know that area. It's one-fourth side squared, square root of three. Where would they get you with that? That would be on the volume area problems with the cross sections or equilateral triangles. And you will get something of that hard in this class. That's the area for an equilateral triangle. You will. Now, you want me to derive it for you? It's not hard. So you have to know a little geometry. If this is my side, and if I drop the altitude, that now becomes half of the side. So how do you find the area of an equilateral triangle, of any size, one half, base, what's the base here? Size times the height. Well, if this is S, and that's S over 2, that's a 60 degree angle. What's this height going to be? S over 2, square root of 3. Putting that in right there, I get 1 half S. And then that's the square root of 3 over S over 2. So there's the 1 fourth, there's the side squared, and there's the square root of 3. Good. Because if you're on the exam and you forget the formula, you can always find it again. You want as many tools in the toolbox as you can get. Okay. So I want a min I want to find the max and min of the area. So what's the area? What's the area for this? 10 minus x over 4 what? Squared. Plus. And then I want the area of that, which is 1 fourth. The side squared, which is x over 3. Do I need parentheses? Yes, I do. Times the square root of 3. Honestly, I, I think I'd just still distribute that out. I mean, you can do the same area as your number on the first one. Or do you want to square it and divide? Same rule. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one, but I'm going to simplify the other one. Okay, so hopefully you won't forget something on the chain rule, because it's easy to do. And what's this end up being? I have a bunch of numbers here. I get plus the square root of 3 from this, and then it's over what? 4 times, I almost said 3, but I would be wrong. 4 times 9, which is 36x squared. Okay, now we can take the derivative. Oh, we can close each other with. Why can we close it either? What's the smallest x could be? x is going to be 0. What's the biggest it could be? In which case, I don't have both figures. So these, well, how will I get them in a minute? I'll have to evaluate it. I can. You're right, but I can still do it mathematically. You're right. Geometrically, it doesn't make sense. But mathematically, if I close it, then I can figure out the max and min. If x is 0, this is not going to give you an area of 0. It might be that you only get one figure to minimize your area. I don't know. You have to consider it at one point. Okay, so you want to find the other points? Or points? I don't know if it's one or two. I don't, I don't know. So what's a prime? It's 2, 10 minus x over 4 to the first power times negative 1 fourth. Did everybody see that? Easy to miss the 4. Oh, but is it negative 1 fourth? Yes, that's right. I almost did it wrong. Plus, well, this is easy, 2 square root of 3 over 36. Okay. Now, if you're a, an engineer in science class, you probably can't go out to decimals, but you got to carry all the decimals and get to you. So I'd rather leave it exact. Quite a bit of math on here. Okay. We are going to solve for x, but let's go ahead and simplify this. This is negative 1 half times, I'm going to pull a fourth out, 1 fourth, 10 minus x. Is that right? Are you okay with that? I did the 2 times the, that gave me a negative 1 half. That's still the 4 in the denominator. It's like, I like the way it looks better. Oh, I can reduce this too. That makes what? 
No, I did two times negative one fourth, which is negative one half. I said, okay, take it. And then I'm going to divide the two in, in the 36 too. Plus 18x. And I want to find out where that square is. Okay, well, if I multiply everything by a multiple of, a common multiple of 8 and 18, then I can get rid of the fractions, which I don't want. What does 8 and 18 go into? 254? No, 8 times 7 is 56. Or I could put this on the other side and cross multiply. How about if I do that? That was easier. So it's 1 8, 10 minus x equals square root of 3 over 18 x, and I can cross multiply to get rid of that. I don't like all those. So I'm going to get 8 times this, and then 18 times that. Yeah, be 76. I have to have all the x's on the same side. So I'm going to add 18x to both sides. So I get x times 18 plus 8 radical 3. Six. <laughs> Equals 180. Whatever that answer is. X equals 180 over 18 plus 8 square root of 3. Is the second derivative test easier? Or do you want to just evaluate your function at? I can find A of 0. Did I do it wrong? A of 10 and A of this X value. One will give you the max. One will give you the minimum. And in one case, if there is only one X coordinate, the, one of them is going to be at the end point. So what's a of zero? Is it? You can read that off my answer sheet. <laughs> what's a of ten? I should have three decimal places. And what's a of that ugly number? Okay, that, that is. That's the minimum. And the maximum is A of 10. Which one is that? Is that the square or the triangle? If X is 10, then this is 0. It's the triangle, isn't it? If, if X is 10, then this is 0. So it's the triangle. So you take the y and make it into a triangle, that gives you the maximum area. Hmm. Ugly looking numbers, I tell you. Okay, if you oh, can I get you guys to put them in here so I can easily find them? Your correction? Put them in there. <laughs> yeah. I gotta freeze the board though. Unless you want everybody to see your stuff. No, no it's not. Okay, this is 